CCPA GDPR. Migrate data at the speed and scale of Spark to Redshift, Snowflake, S3 and Hadoop while protecting PII data in motion with encryption and SSH. Populate data lakes and warehouses using our Spark framework. Your staff can easily use our product removing the need to search for expensive and scarce resources. Spark 2.4.4 is now a ranked ETL technology with superior memory processing speeds, added flexibility with JDBC, ability to work with data in motion, allows the creation of schemas and our Spark application, framework is callable from our GUI or Spring APIs. We offer CCPA, GDPR, data migration, ETL basics at a fraction of the cost of others. As you see we are starting with an empty redshift schema target. Now we are making a connection to a Teradata database. I first want to show you that the table we will be migrating has no encrypted email and that the name Lisa is also not encrypted for this will be our first task to encrypt email patterns and Lisa while the data is in motion to Redshift. Now we establish the connection. As you see much gets pre-populated from our application. We then select the files or files we want to migrate. Then we select from the drop-down to encrypt and migrate data to Redshift. We then select one or many patterns of data we want to discover and, in this case we selected email, to encrypt for compliance and we are also searching for the name Lisa and encrypting this value wherever found. We will now run the process. Now the job's completed, let's view the metadata and we see the process found Lisa and email patterns. Now as we view the migration results to the Redshift database table we see that Lisa and all the data with email patterns have been encrypted as we would expect based on our process parameters. After your initial migration process to any of our target databases or files you may for many reasons need to decrypt some of the data or optionally as you can see in a prior video use our proxy to communicate decrypted and encrypted data. Now that the decryption process has completed, we can see that Lisa and the emails in Redshift are now decrypted. The user would have needed proper credentials to do so. Now we are looking at the Oracle table we will migrate to Amazon's S3 database and see that it is all not encrypted. We are now connecting to the Oracle database server, selected to encrypt data, selecting the table to be processed, from the drop-down box confirming encryption in motion and that we are migrating to S3, creating a folder path for the new S3 file. Now selecting to discover for IP addresses patterns in the name Lisa to encrypt in motion to the S3 file, and run the process. Now that the process is completed, we can view the S3 file and we see that the IP addresses and the name Lisa are encrypted as expected. Now as we saw with Redshift, we can see how easy it is to decrypt the data in S3 also. Once again only those that have been given authority by the admin will have access to this decryption process. Now as we view the S3 file, we see that Lisa and the IP addresses are now decrypted as requested. Here I am showing that we ran a discovery against the S3 file and found IP addresses and we can drill into the file to verify they are not false positives and they are actual IP addresses, so we will encrypt them in S3 data at rest versus the in motion examples we just saw. Now we will select the email address directly from another Amazon's S3 file and process it to be encrypted for compliancy. We execute the process against the data at rest and now we view the data in the S3 file, and we see that the email addresses are now encrypted. I am now going to process a discovery run to find wherever the first name Lisa is found. I am running this to show later the results in our extensive metadata along with all our prior processes that were run. We can see some metadata here that Lisa was found just once. As you will see you can select the run type of metadata you want to download in the date span of runs or you can get all the runs. The metadata is downloadable in an Excel comma delimited format as you see. Here you can see the timestamp, database and table or file, search pattern or value, column and total rows found in, total rows in table or file, row number, and more, where an action was taken. Now here is the metadata for the discovery run for Lisa with no other actions. This metadata can be used by ETL personnel or DBAs to invoke encryption or for use in regulations like right of usage or erasure. I hope what was evident in this video, is that DPI Comply has extended its ability from the most comprehensive and complete CCPA and GDPR compliancy application that delivers in days to months versus years, and also delivers data migration at speeds and scales beyond the traditional ETL tool, accommodates data migration and with data compliance in. Motion and at rest for migration to the cloud for data systems like Redshift, S3, Hadoop, Snowflake and others and will soon migrate data from most every JDBC compliant RDBMS to one another.
We offer our light version of CCPA and GDPR for free and have cost-effective add-ons for data migration, biometrics for facial and object recognition, OCR files and our family of proxies that allow e-commerce and analytics as well as applications to communicate seamless with a simple change of a port for non-encrypted data and encrypted, compliant data. Thank you for taking the time to view this video and please contact us with any questions, desire to trial the application or to become a partner. Call us at 847-440-4439 www.dpiacomply.com